And I said, uh, she said, I said JWB. She was like, who is JWB? Who is JWB? And she said, I said, Judy. She said, ah. Oh. So next time, oh, she you know, knows me. Yeah, she knows you all of a sudden. So <laughs> the next thing you know, uh, you know, I, I left and never looked back. You know, I just left out. No, she was like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And I called a mutual, somebody that I've known for years and years that was already in there. And, um, you know, I was like, what did I do? And the female said, you got married on Facebook. And then next thing you know, the person was like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. So then she pulled it up on the Internet and I left. I say that to say this. See, some people want to be in our shoes, right? Some people want to be married. Some people want to be delivered from certain things. Um, some people just need an example. Some people need an influence within the life. Some people just need to be touched. Now, this woman's unfriended me from Facebook on one of her profiles because of what I believe and what I stand for. Let me tell you something, people. It's a lot of y'all that are going to your jobs, you know, and I wanted to talk about this yesterday. You're selling your soul to the devil. Oh. And I'm a preach, I'm a preach, and you can get mad at me, you can do anything you want to do, I, you know I don't care, because it's to help somebody. You can't think that just because you make $100,000, that it won't fall off tomorrow. How come people at your jobs don't know about the Word of God? How come people at your jobs don't know how you feel about God? How come your friends and family don't know how you feel about God? What you want to reveal on the outside? Why is God in a box? And I say that to say this. Sometimes you're going to lose people when you choose him. Mm -hmm. When you live for him, you're going to lose people because people want to live for him. But some people are so stuck in what the world is bringing about that they don't know how to give it all to him. Mm, yes, that's true. You know, a lot of times, and it's just like this, you know, and, and please don't be offended, but I just want to be real in the deal, well, real I, in the field. I've never stopped you from being You know, it's just like, you know, when me and you talk, right, when, mm. when me and you you know, used to talk and people used to come and tell you how crazy I was talking and things like that. Well, those certain people probably wanted to get with me. Where'd that come from? That's I just crazy. I don't know. I don't know. I that's can't say that's yeah, true. I don't, not I don't the ones know. talking to me. No, no, not, to not the me. guys, but the, but the females no, and a little no. bit of excitement. But anyway, <laughs> no, but listen. But some of them, not, no, not, not our family member, not our family member, but in school, I was running my mouth. I was loud mouth, always talking, crazy acting, you know, that type of thing. And, but people knew I had sense and people knew what I could bring to the table, but they were so afraid to get with the excitement that, you know, because of what other people may think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they were afraid to claim the excitement because they didn't want anybody to basically um, talk. They didn't want people to talk. They didn't want people to ask questions about how good the excitement feels. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> you know, so it kind of held back their blessings. There were certain women who left um, 
just because of the excitement. I put certain things on social media. They're working for corporate America, so, you know, they didn't want anybody at their jobs looking at my profile. And next thing you know, they get fired just because I said something so exciting or something that maybe uh, turned their turned their heads. So basically, they had to leave because corporate America was basically um, basically holding them back from the excitement. Um, but we do that with God. We do that with God when we go to our jobs, when we go to our, um, when we go to our you know, uh, out in the streets, go to the clubs and turn up and drink. We on Facebook live and, you know, showing off our beverages and, uh, you know, showing off the highest, the highest paid clothes, but you don't never show off who, who allowed you to have to these have things. things. Yeah. Yeah. And what it's doing is it's affecting other people um, to where they need that type of leadership. They need that type of relationship. And nobody is really setting the example of how to interact with God so that God can interact with you in order to interact with others. And what it's doing is it's killing people. Um, you know, people are committing suicide. People are committing homicide because they can't hear the word of God. Future ain't going to give you the word of God. You know, only thing he's going to give you is, you know, God blessing the trappers. But is God really blessing all the trappers? Is God really blessing all the trappers? Does God really want you out there in the streets trapping? What are you trapping? Now, if you're trapping drugs, do you think God wants you to go out in the streets and sell weed and sell dope and sell all of these things and turn up and drink till you fall out to wake up to somebody that you wouldn't even say hey to the next day or, or wow. the day before? Wow. Do you think God really wants that? But people are not telling you that. And so what's happening is it's affecting others, others, around, others you. around you. The spirit. That spirit is a heavy thing. That spirit is so heavy. When you got a relationship with God, God will put certain things within you, within you that you can't help but to do. You can't mm -hmm. help but to act a certain way. You can't help but to say certain things. That mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is so heavy. But how many of y'all are fighting the Holy Spirit? And it's not pointing the finger. We all got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But it's to help somebody else. You ain't got to share this. You ain't got to share this. But a lot of times, we affect other people by the way we act. A testimony. And by the what we say. Mm -hmm. The power of the tongue speaks life or death. Yeah. What are you speaking? What, what are you speaking? speaking? What is your life speaking? Yeah. Yes. Amen. What is your life speaking? What are you doing in order to help somebody else that needs you? That needs God. They need God. You know? They need God. How are you living your life? How have you structured your life? So, yes, I understand you have a great job. You have a wonderful education. You have this wonderful home. You live in the perfect zip code. But what is your life saying about your creator? The one who gave you all these things. Um, that's what's more important. You know, I often talk about only what you do for Christ will last. Are you building 
for here or for eternity. And some people, oh, Judy, you just always try to be so deep. No, no, because I've gone through enough life to know that these temporary things can be taken. You know, me going through what I went through, <clears throat> excuse me, in my 30s and my health changing and waking up to no one being there, no job, friends busy doing all of what they want to do and realizing that the only person that was there for me was God. He sustained me through that entire time. Not people, not jobs. You know, I talk about there was a point in which the money coming in wasn't even equal to the rent. And yet we never, the children and I were never put out. How did that happen? You know, when the numbers don't add up, you know it's God. When the math doesn't make sense. But what are we doing? I told God that when he was getting me through those situations, that if I got through, that I would always point to him. I would always talk about him. Things on the earth are going to pass away. You know, you can have a job today and need another job tomorrow. You know, we just updated his resume. Things might move on. He's been at a job six months. Okay, time to update that resume. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, we're waking up tomorrow with some people in the hospital, coming out of a hospital, or about to go into a hospital. We don't know. And so you just can't put your hope, your faith in the things around you, in the home you have, in the car you drive. I know we talk about these things a lot, but there are a lot of people that that's, they wake up in the morning, right? And that's all, you know, it's time for me to get another car. I have three cars. I think I want another car. You know, um, people wake up in the morning thinking about those things, not knowing how they're even going to end their day. Will you get in an accident in that car and be able to walk away from it? So um, it's important. I also wanted to touch upon something else. You had talked about cutting off the television and all those different things. I did that years ago. That That's so strange about the two of us. I did that years ago. And um, if Jennifer Cook watches this, if Veronica Davis watches this, if um, Renia Shafiq, Priscilla Cole, they all know. I wanted to get to the point where I wanted to get married. And I told everybody I'm going to date intentionally. I'm going to live intentionally. I'm not going to sit in my house anymore. Um, and what I had to do, though, is separate myself from things that weren't going to help me on that goal. I had to separate myself from a lot of, you know, music, television mm. shows. Because first of all, where do you see happy marriages on television? Please point me to the show, unless you're watching some reruns of the Cosby show or something like that. Point me to a show. Point me to the music that talks about courtship and marriage. Um, point me to sometimes even some of the movies we go to. There might be a love story, but the love story usually now has some sort of weird components in it and they're already in bed way before they're even sure that they're in love with the person. So I had to cut myself off from that. I had to say, if I want a successful marriage, I have to go to the creator of marriage. Mm. And I have to live a life that will eventually bring me the marriage I want. I've been married two times. I say that now openly. I was married two times. I did not follow. I followed my heart and whatever emotions I felt. And if this person hung around long enough and said, I love you, which so many people say, I love you, and then are not even there the next year. How many? I can attest to that. I had to get back to what it meant to literally mean I'm going to give my life to another person and that other person has to be able to want to give their life to me. And that meant cutting out a lot of worldly media influences. Um, I don't know how many of you can listen to some of this music and not have some sexual desires. And we're probably going to have to do a show all on that by itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because, you know, I know my friends are going to start laughing. 
I used to sit around and just say mortify, mortify. People say, oh, well, you know, um, you're not really maintaining your Christianity when you're dating. You know, it's not hard to be celibate. You know what's hard? To be abstinent when you care about somebody, when you're in love with somebody, when you see them every day and they look good and Ooh. you'd love to just sample, <laughs> okay? You just love to. How do you then say, wait, I'm not going to touch you? That's not easy. That's what I even want to talk about. We talk about being single and we all are trying to date, but how do you maintain in that dating? How do you maintain a godly presence in the dating? That is another episode altogether because that we've got to talk about that. We can't just talk about, okay, you're celibate and you're single. What about being abstinent and you're dating? What about even being abstinent while you're courting? You already know this is the person you want to be with, but you're still going to be abstinent. Yeah, you're gonna stay away from those. You're uh, gonna stay away from those yeah, influences. The, the the desire. Yes. You know you. How do you, you can talk that? on the phone? Uh, a lot of times, and I know you know we're talking about us, but we talked on the phone, slept on the phone, and things like that. When we were doing events, we do the events and then go our opposite way, but we spent a lot of time together when she came to the house, she made sure that family members were around. Are you giving it away? So, it's supposed to be well, another show. The, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. But, you know, I, I think a lot of that with us is that we watch what we listen to. Mm. We watch our surroundings. Um, a lot of people that's been around in, in a, you know, trail, you can ask your, your people. You can ask HV. When I was around, I never, and, and Ty, you can ask uh, Quickery, I never listened to music. Like, period. I, I, I got to a point to when I'm at work, when I'm at the security job, um, if I go in the, little, in the back in the console area and somebody got on Power 98 or, uh, you know, uh, um, 101.9 or whatever, uh, not 101.9 or however, I turn the station immediately. And the reason why is because I don't want, and, and those are my people. You know J. Pragmatic. If y'all know I posted about J. Pragmatic, they're my people. I love him. Stacy Blackman, love him. You know, Fly Tyler, love him. That's my brother. I love him. Love him super. You know, super. Nobody can ever take their love for Derek, Derek Jacobs, Ramon Jacobs, Chucky Jacobs, who y'all know as Pastor, Pastor J. Jacobs. Like mm. be, before all of this, they were my people. My family loved them. They were bad, but them, them are my <laughs> people. We from HB, but you know, I I watch what I listen to because I know that when I listen to something that spirit rubs off on me to where somebody, that spirit might rub off on somebody else unintentionally, unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know that it's in my spirit. I'm just going about the day and it's already in my spirit. So I got to turn it to 100.9. You know, I got to turn it to that because basically I want people to see God when they see me. You know, people that wonder who who is God. You know, a lot of people, even that I work with, that, you know, Chris don't even like, Trills don't even like, that don't even, ha that have no idea about who God is. Yeah, is. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at me like, this guy's crazy. I wonder where he come from. He comes from another <laughs> planet. You know, he come, where is he coming from? Where, where, where is this guy? I've never seen a guy like him. So they try to get familiar with who I am. I give them a card and say, this is what I do. You know, this is who I am. Because at the end of the day, when they're shocked, when they look at that card, wow, man, this must be pretty nice here. 
When I went to Mooney's last night and I was talking, I know I was supposed to get into that subject, but I went to Mooney's Lounge. And, um, you know, because I was invited, Biggs invited me to Mooney's Lounge, you know, via Facebook. And I went out there and I gave the dude a card. And I saw them jamming the trap rap and all that stuff. I saw them just, you know. <laughs> and so I went to one of the owners and I was like, when y'all going to do Christian events? We throw Christian parties. Wow, man, nobody has ever came up and said anything like that to us wow. before. Wow. You, you know, just writing down his information. This is who you need to talk to. And you call her tomorrow and make arrangements so that we can make this thing go. A lot of y'all don't understand, like, when I'm out in these streets, I'm bringing the message. The clubs, yeah, when we're in the clubs. I'm when in the I'm in the clubs and stuff like that, I'm networking because there's one club right now, and I could say it. You know why? Because I'm from there. That club sits in a in in the same neighborhood that my parents been in for 30 plus years sitting in that same neighborhood that I brought people to that don't even want to bring the word of God in that club. And I'm still there. And they don't want to bring the word of God in that club. They don't want to give God three or four hours of his time. He provided this for you. He allowed you to do it. Not to say that he's for you to do things like that, but he allowed you to have this in order to make an establishment for yourself. And you can't give him three or four times of your day on a Sunday. But everybody else, tonight is going to be Wednesday. Uh, 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 somebody well-known in the city going to tell you to come up, turn up, drink, whatever, come up, uh, socialize, mm -hmm. wind whatever, down wind down Wednesday. <laughs> However, you know, and millions and, well, I could say hundreds of people going to be up in there ready to turn up and go to work in the morning and act like nothing happened last night with makeup on, with shades, with everything like that. And you can't give God three hours wow. of your time. Wow. Wow. And you know I call you out. I'm not scared. Because one thing about it, people need to be called out. People need to be held accountable. It's not judging. It's being held accountable. That's just like Ty. Chris holds me accountable and he don't even know Big Trill, who you see right now, holds me accountable and he don't even believe I have the same standards or whatever that I have. But sometimes he holds me accountable. Maybe by the things that he posts or, or he tags me on certain things. But that's just God using him to say, you need to step up and do something. Or you need to watch what you're saying to some of these people. You need to watch what you're doing in front of some of these people. And he don't even know that. You know why? Because I watch the spirits that are around me. I don't listen to certain spirits. And it had to take corporate America in the past and people in the past in order to see these things that I see every day. That I see through certain people. Who are you ministering to? It ain't necessarily I go to church every morning or, you know, I go to church on Sunday or go to church every time the doors are open. Church is church. The same people that's going in are the same people that's coming out. They're going in and out of church, in and out of church, in and out of church. But somebody in those streets, somebody right around that corner on Monroe Road right now needs you. They need a word from you. Somebody on social media right now need a word from you. Are you revealing your relationship with God? Mm. That's deep. If you can reveal a relationship with future, you certainly can reveal a relationship with God. And yes, I will call future out. Yes, I will call Rich Homie Quan out. Yes, I will call the amigos, the amigos, the amigos, whatever. Yes. Yes, because if you can turn up for the world, you certainly can turn up with God. Being a Christian is fun. 
It it's hard. It's really, really hard. Sometimes. It's hard, yes. It's, it's really hard sometimes. But it's fun. Mm -hmm. And it's worth it. It's worth it. That's the point. It's worth it. It's worth it. You know, we can listen to Young Jeezy, you know, trap rap and all of that stuff. We can listen to Chris Brown. When was R&B ever crying? When was R&B ever rapping? Huh? Chris Brown came out as a pop star. When did you have to wear bundles of makeup and show your million dollar home? Did the Cosbys ever show the outside of their home? Or did they show the inside of the home? My inside. I think you might have got a shot or two. <laughs> I don't even I don't even remember ever seeing the outside of oh, the Cosby right. Show's home. And the thing about it is we talk about the Cosby's, but we also had the Jeffersons. We yes. also had um yeah, had um good times. Yeah, good times. We also had we even had the mix show, um, Mr. Drummond. What uh different no not Saxo, no that's um Drummond, Arnold. Arnold and Willis. I know. That wasn't Facts of Life. What was that? Um different strokes. Different strokes. Different strokes. Different strokes. But now we got into the point to where everybody's looking at money. I got I hang around somebody that's forty years old that's fascinated with basically what kind of car somebody drive and they older than me. Uh, how big somebody's house is, uh, how much somebody's house is, but I ain't talking about their soul. You know why? Because the only influence that that person has is me. The only good influence. See, people want to be around you when you're doing what they do. You know, they, they want to be around you. You know how many people I've lost just because, and I'm going to lose more people. You know how many family members that cut my throat just because they see in a different direction that I'm going in. I got a family member right now that cut my throat and I'm trying to work with them. Because mm. they don't understand the direction. They don't understand what's going on. You know, these same people, you know, don't understand, but they ain't trying to go to the higher source in order to understand. See, so I understand. The Bible talked about it years ago, and I ain't no Bible scholar. I live by example. When God talks to me, God talks to me. God, you know, God talks to me. He don't talk. He might talk through a scripture if I pull it up. But when I'm walking, when I'm at work, when I'm at the gym, when I'm on the phone or when we're talking, when we're, when we're together, God is talking to me constantly, going. Mm -hmm. And so I'm seeing these things that I, as I turn off the radio and turn off the TV, I see these things. And the Bible's talked about that years ago. A lot of people don't believe in the Bible, but the Bible talked about this years ago, uh, 2,000, 20,000, however years ago, that you will idolize others before you idolize me. Yeah, before you put put him. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you see hot topics every week. The hot topic of the day, and it's going to be on The View in a few minutes. The hot topic <laughs> is what Donald Trump is doing. Who cares? Because Donald Trump ain't wake me up this morning. Huh? Donald Trump ain't the first person that I said thank you to when I woke up this morning. Donald Trump don't have me talking to y'all about God. About things that you don't hear within the world. Donald Trump ain't do that. The Dallas Cowboys, what Tony Romo, what, what team Tony Romo going to? Who cares? What team are you going to? Are you building a team? Uh, Russell Westbrook is the best player in the world. Well, okay, he the best player right now, Michael Jordan, the best player ever, which I beg to differ. But the reality is, how good are you? 
How good are you? You talking about other people when God is trying to showcase who you are. God is trying to bring you out to the light. People want to look at Russell Westbrook, Westbrook, but those same people that want to look at Russell, Russell West, whatever his name is, <laughs> want to look at you. They need you more than they need Russell Westbrook. And God is trying to bring that out of you. But you watching this reality TV, mm. this 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 Empire, trap rap scandal. music, I'm being saying, fifty years old. No, I want to say I'm not saying that we shouldn't have forms of entertainment, but when you're more involved with the sinful life of a fictional character, it's not even a godly life. It's a sinful life of a fictional character. When that becomes real for you. Where is your mind? You know, what he's saying is God should not just be Sunday for two hours. God, if he's really, truly the leader of your life, is every day. Every day. And so I'm not telling people, oh, you can never watch anything. But put some perspective on it. Put some perspective on it. God is how you got up this morning. The reason you're in your right mind. He's blessed you with jobs. He's blessed you with homes. You know, when we get our home, we've already decided prayer breakfast at least once a month, haven't we? Yeah. Prayer breakfast. No, People I want it up. every weekend. I know he wanted every weekend. I want, no, I want it, no, I want it every Saturday. See what I'm saying? I want it. This is what I want. I want breakfast and I want dinner. And this is what I'm going to do. I want breakfast. I want us to wake up in the morning. We're going to invite total strangers, everybody to our house. And we're going to invite them in. And we're going to have prayer breakfast. We're going to talk about the word of God. We're going to have fun, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to have fun. Okay. So our house is going to be a club. So that night, when you go into 5400 or before you hit NC Tavern or before you hit Hickory Press Box, Tavern, Press Hickory, Hickory Tavern or any club that's wide open, you know, that, that's getting your wide open turned up. What's my man name? I think they closed it down. Somebody say they closed it down um, over there on Graham Street, over there on Graham and Fifth Street, oh. Kennedy, Sean Kennedy Club. Uh, uh, you going to see Miami at Royale? Sports One. Sports One. I Peter mean, at Sports all, One all Club them. One. Are- you going? We're going to invite you to come see us. Now we ain't going to stop you, cause believe you me, I go to these same spots sometimes. Mm-hmm. We ain't going to stop you. Mm-hmm. We ain't going to stop you from going to those spots, but you will feel the word of God when you come in here. <laughs> To where you going to go out there and you going to minister and you're going to talk the word of God to somebody who needs it. So before we go, Tasha, I encourage you. I know you work for CMS. I was talking to a principal Facebook messenger, and I think a lot of them from CMS are shocked because of where they saw me at during that time, that time. from where I am now. So it's like, whoa, I just saw him cleaning toilets. Five years ago, what does this guy think he's doing right now? You know, I turned my head to him about five years ago. Didn't think he wasn't going to be no more than somebody who cleaned up toilets or, you know, swept uh, swept steps and, and you know, vacuumed carpet or, or cleaned up the classroom <laughs> empty my trash. <laughs> you know, where is this guy coming from? But, um, you know, a lot of them are afraid. To talk the word of God because they're challenged at their jobs. And I don't understand you around all these kids and your influence. These kids look at you as high file celebrities. They look at you just like they look at Mimi Leaks or Nene Seeks, whatever her name is. <laughs> they look at you like they look at her, but you're afraid to talk about your relationship with God just because of your destination. Uh, or just because of where you feel that that job might place you mm-hmm. if you talk God. And a lot of people that work for the school system amongst educators that are so educated that don't, that are afraid to speak the word of God to people who need 
the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because somebody that you're around today or somebody who looks at Tasha Horn is pro even before they saw Tasha Horn is probably thinking I'm going to commit suicide because I have nobody to talk to. I'm going to do something unthoughtful on that, the thought thoughtful because I have nobody to speak into me, wow. speak into my life. So before they go to that school, you know, and, and see you sit down at that desk. They saw you yesterday, but they see you sit down, saw you sit down at that desk and came up to you and talked. They didn't feel God, not to say that you don't have a relationship with God, but they didn't feel God or they didn't hear God because you couldn't say God because of the environment oh. you're in. So I challenge you. Yes. I challenge Tawana, when you at Clinton, if you in the office at Clinton, I challenge Brandy. To bring the word of God today. To bring the word of God today. So if this uh, affects you, if, if this, if the loving, the giver um, has put something within your heart and mind, please share it. If you don't feel like sharing the live, share what Mr. and Mrs. Excitement are saying. I got to put that in there because a <laughs> lot of y'all, let me tell you. What y'all left for, what y'all left for, uh, what another man, another woman's trash is another woman's treasure. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I appreciate is Mrs. Excitement was willing to be Mrs. Excitement. Now watch what God puts her with the excitement. And I